Good day everyone! Today, we will going to talk about the things to consider in planning instruction. And this video discussion is primarily intended for my students in BEH second year Block 3 and Block 19 at Taraga Community College. Ready na ba kayo? Halina at matuto! Of course, let me share first the lesson's objectives. At the end of this lesson, the students must be able to first discuss the different things that should be considered in planning instruction and explain their importance. Second, differentiate declarative and procedural knowledge and give examples that are found in the elementary social studies curriculum. Third, write instructional objectives in elementary social studies that adhere to Bloom's taxonomy of the cognitive domain. Incorporate differentiation in planning social studies activity. And fifth, reflect on one's technological pedagogical content knowledge or the TPAC. In this lesson, we will continue to compare instructional planning to planning your vacation. Halimbawa, ikaw at yung Dabarkads mo, eh, magbabakasyon. Sabihin natin, halimbawa, sa Koron, Palawan. But before that, you need to take many things into consideration, right? You have first to determine what clothes you will wear. You also need to take into account you and your friend's interest. Merong iba sa inyo na gusto mag-snorkeling or gusto ng island hopping or even going to the beach, doing sunbathing, right? The same thing can be said about instructional planning. There are many things that you have to consider in order to deliver a successful unit or lesson. In this lesson, you will learn the six things to consider in planning instruction. So these are the first, content. Second, objectives. And we also have the classroom environment. Here, the materials. And of course, the students. And lastly, the teacher. Class. All of these elements are crucial in planning for effective instruction. And take note na ang pagpaplano ng instruction ay hindi siya magagawa o matatapos ng madalian lang at isang upuan lang, especially for beginning teachers, sa mga teachers na nagsisimula pa lang. We as informed decision makers and reflective practitioners, we need to take into account a number of things in formulating a plan for learning. May mga pagkakataon kasi, tandaan nyo na ang isang approach or strategy may work in one class but not in another class. Therefore, it is important for teachers to look into different factors that may affect learning. Yung nakikita ninyo sa screen, these are the six factors that I am talking about. Alright, one of the primary elements that should be considered in instructional planning is the content. Class, dito papasok yung tinatawag na knowledge. So basically, tayong mga guro, syempre, dapat alam natin kung ano ang ituturo natin sa mga bata in order for us to effectively prepare the lessons. So in talking about content, it is important to distinguish the two types of knowledge. So ano ba itong two types of knowledge? We have here the declarative knowledge and the procedural knowledge class when we say knowledge it is all about effects information and skills acquired by a person through experience and education ngayon alamin natin kung saan sa dalawang yan na uri ng knowledge papasok ang pure facts at kung saan naman ang skills Declarative knowledge entails knowing about something. So, dito sinasagot ang tanong na ano. Ano ang dapat matutunan ng learners? In other words, declarative knowledge comes in the form of facts, concepts, and generalizations. So, dito, 
nandito pumapasok yung tinatawag na lower order thinking skills. Bakit siya lower? Kasi usually, rote memorization of places and facts ang nandito like identifying or defining things. On the other hand, procedural knowledge is knowing how to do something. Paano? Ayan, dito pumapasok yung tanong na paano. Paano ngayon matututo ang mga bata? Paano niya mauunawaan ang topic? Paano niya ito susuriin? At paano niya i-a-apply ang kanyang natutunan? So, procedural knowledge is in the form of skills. Ayan. So, um, hindi na lang siya puro memorization, but you are teaching your students here in procedural knowledge on how to understand, on how to apply, analyze, evaluate, and create meaningful learnings. And now, let's have some examples of declarative knowledge and procedural knowledge. In geography, identifying the elements of a map is an example of declarative knowledge, while determining the absolute location of the Philippines is an example of procedural knowledge. Look at the difference. Okay, identifying and determining are different things. Okay, class? In identifying kasi, you're just going to tell kung ano ang nalalaman mo. Madali lang siyang gawin, di ba? Lalo na kung memorize mo yung konsepto. On the other hand, determining means you have to decide what something is. Di ba sa paggawa ng decision, you have first to analyze the situation before taking an action? Sa pagtukoy ng tiyak na lokasyon ng Pilipinas sa mapa, Siyempre, you have to critically analyze first kung ano ba ang tiyak na lokasyon sa Pilipinas or ng Pilipinas sa mapa using the lines of longitude, latitude, and the degrees. Of course, nako, kailangan mo dyan ng analyzation. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, mas deep ang learnings ng bata dito sa procedural knowledge. Okay? And let's have another example. In declarative knowledge, knowing the significant heroes and events in the Philippine Revolution. And on the other hand, Critically analyzing the primary sources from this period is an example of procedural knowledge. Kung mapapansin ninyo, sa declarative knowledge, more on ano siya, facts, concepts, and generalizations, right? Madali lang siyang makuha ng mga bata, lalo na kung memorize nila yung konsepto, or memorize nila yung facts, or alam nila kung ano yung pinapagawa sa kanila. Madali lang magawa yun ng mga bata. On the other hand, sa procedural knowledge, mapapansin nyo, more on skills siya. And higher ang order of thinking skills na meron dito. Ngayon, bakit mahalagang malaman o makilala kung ano ang declarative at procedural knowledge sa instructional planning? Because it helps the teachers how to present the content in a more organized manner. So, how do teachers present the lessons in a more organized manner? In declarative knowledge, it may be presented through expository approach. It can also be presented through a graphic organizer or data retrieval chart. Okay? Ang procedural knowledge naman, it may be presented through a task analysis or problem solving. Okay? Dito sa Pilipinas class, maraming educators ang nagsasabi na ang araling panlipunan ay isang kurso na kung saan ang content ay medyo mabigat. Kaya yung tendency is to emphasize this um, declarative knowledge. Okay? And prioritize the rote memorization of people, places, events, and in instruction, and of course, assessment. But this should, this, but, um, this should not be the case sa kasalukuyan. Hindi ito dapat mangyari na masyadong um, binibigyang pansin itong declarative knowledge, which is more on memorization of facts. Lalo na, um, yung K-12 curriculum framework ng alaling panlipunan highlights the procedural knowledge. It is being highlighted in the form of critical competencies and skills. Ngayon, alamin natin kung ano-ano itong competencies and skills na um, hina-highlight dito sa procedural knowledge. Alright! 
Sabi ko nga kanina that procedural knowledge is being highlighted in the K-12 curriculum framework in Araling Pandipunan in the form of critical competencies and skills. And now, let's have some examples of competencies and skills in procedural knowledge that can be found in Araling Pandipunan curriculum guide. I have here a table that shows such competencies and skills. Tingnan nyo, itong competencies, nandito siya sa first column, and those skills can be found here, in second column. Kung mapapansin nyo, yung competencies, ang dinedevelop niya ay higher order thinking skills dito sa procedural knowledge. Tingnan nyo to, pagsusuri at interpretasyon ng datos. Dito sa skills, nakababasa ng statistical na datos. Nakababasa ng mapanuring pamamaraan upang maunawaan ang historical na konteksto ng sanggunian at ang motibo at pananaw ng may akda. Ayan, tingnan nyo. Hindi na siya more on memorization of facts, di ba? Hindi na siya more on or nakafocus sa pag um, pag memorize ng mga places ng or ng mga names. Ayan, deeper na ang learnings ng mga bata dito sa procedural knowledge kung mapapansin niyo. Bakit ito ngayon mahalaga? It is important to develop this higher level of procedural knowledge in our students in order for us to ensure that we will produce learners equipped with 21st century skills. Okay? Um, tatandaan nyo lang that na, um, ngayon, sa kasalukuyan, binibigyang emphasis ang procedural knowledge in the K-12 Araling Panlipunan Curriculum Framework. Hindi na siya more on declarative knowledge kung saan nakafocus lang sa pag-memorize ng facts, ng concepts, or more on generalization. Yung competencies and skills ngayon sa curriculum framework ng Araling Panlipunan ay highlighted ang procedural knowledge in, for, in the form of competencies and skills. Okay, maliwanag na. Kung may katanungan pa, um, you can ask me directly, you can message me, or you can send your messages in our GC para mabigyan pa ng um, examples para maunawaan ng maayos ang ating topic. Ayan, maliwanag na kung bakit ang content ay isa sa mga bagay na dapat nating isa alang-alang in making or doing an instructional plan. Okay na. So, let's now proceed to other things that can be considered in planning instruction. Okay? The next thing to be considered in instructional planning are the objectives. Objective is a specific statement of a learning outcome. So, dito sa objectives class, inilalarawan ito kung ano-ano yung mga nais nating ipagawa bilang mga teacher sa ating mga estudyante at kung paano natin malalaman kung na-achieve ba nila yung learnings na dapat nilang ma-acquire. So, class, ang pagsasaalang-alang nitong objectives ng lesson ay napakahalaga. Why? Because these are vital in assessing student learning and evaluating the effectiveness of instruction. In the K-12 curriculum guide, statements of learning outcomes are expressed through standards and competencies. Sa curriculum guide class, um, those standards are more general outcome statements that can be achieved in weeks, quarters, year, or years. Last time, di ba, pinagawa ko kayo ng unit plan kung saan yung objectives na nilagay ninyo doon ay for the whole quarter, di ba? So, here, this table shows example of different levels of standards in Adaling Panlipunan Curriculum. For example, this content standards sa grade 2, quarter 1. Okay, ang general um, outcome statements nito ay naipap, naipamamalas ang pag-unawa sa kahalagahan ng kinabibilangang komunidad. So, itong objective na to ay para na sa whole quarter 1 ng grade 2. Okay? On the other hand, competencies are more specific and can be achieved in a shorter period of time, probably in a day or a week. Ito yung mga objectives na ilalagay ninyo sa inyong lessons para sa araw na ito o para sa buong week. Okay? Um, take note class that 
And the learning competencies in a quarter are consistent with the content and performance standards. Maaring ang competencies na ito ay direktang kunin at gamitin ng mga guro para sa kanilang unit or lesson objectives. For example, Ayan, grade 2, quarter 1, competency 1.1. Nasasabi ang payak na kahulugan ng komunidad. So, itong um, objective na ito, pwede na itong, um, or maaari na ang competencies na ito ay direktang kunin at gamitin ng guro para sa kanyang unit or lesson objective. Pwede niya, pwede niya na yan kunin ng direkta kung ano yung nakalagay doon sa curriculum guide. Okay? Teachers also have an option to develop their own objectives based on the competencies. So, pwede tayong gumawa ng sarili nating objectives na naaayon doon sa competencies na nakalagay sa ating curriculum guide. Ayan, example, grade 2, quarter 2, competency 11. Nasusuri ang kahalagahan ng mga pagdiriwang at tradisyon na nabubuklod, na nagbubuklod sa mga tao sa pag-unlad ng sariling komunidad. At yung competency na yan, this can be broken down into more specific objectives. Okay? Example, ayan. Broken down na siya, okay? Nasasabi ang mga pagdiriwang at tradisyon na ginagawa ng mga tao sa sariling komunidad na ipapaliwanag ang kahalagahan ng mga pagdiriwang at tradisyon sa pag-unlad ng komunidad. Tatandaan nyo, class, na tayong mga guro, may kalayaan tayo na gumawa o mag-develop ng sarili nating objectives depende sa topic na meron tayo sa araw o sa linggo na ito. Tatandaan pa rin natin na kahit may kalayaan tayong gumawa ng objectives, dapat din nating tiyakin na ang mga ginawa nating objectives ay eh naaayon pa rin sa mga itinakdang standards at competency sa ating curriculum guide. Okay? In formulating instructional objectives, Bloom's taxonomy of the cognitive domain is a handy reference. Yan. Yang nasa larawan na yan. Napakalaking tulong po nito nitong Bloom's Taxonomy sa paggawa natin ng instructional objectives. It is designed by Benjamin Bloom and his colleagues and it presents a hierarchical ordering of intellectual skills from basic recall of facts to high-level processing of information. Ayan, sabi dito, from basic recall of facts to high-level of processing of information. Tatandaan nyo, class, na itong Bloom's Taxonomy ay napaka-powerful nito sa pag-develop o sa paggawa ng learning objectives. Why? Dahil ipinapaliwanag nito ang proseso. Ayan, itong proseso ng pagkatuto ng mga mag-aaral. Uulitin ko, it explains the process of learning of the students and I explain how. Okay? Before you understand a concept, Siyempre, you have first to remember it. Next, before applying a concept, you must first to understand it. And before you evaluate a process, you must analyze it first. Okay? Uulitin ko yung proseso ng pagkatuto ng mga mag-aaral dito sa Bloom's Taxonomy. Bago mo maunawaan, bago mo maunawaan ang isang konsepto, Dapat mo muna itong matandaan. Okay? At upang mailapat ang isang konsepto, dapat dapat mo muna itong maunawaan. Okay? At upang ma-evaluate ang isang proseso, dapat eh napag-aralan. Ayan, dapat napag-aralan at nasuri mo muna itong mabuti in order to create a meaningful learning. Okay, maliwanag po. Wait lang, class, ha? At buburahin ko lang itong mga ano ko. Itong mga nilagay ko. Ayan. So, in planning social studies instruction, teachers should place importance in developing students' higher thinking skills and it is presented by the upper three categories here in Bloom's Taxonomy. Okay? 
Mm. One of the major criticisms class of social studies education here in the Philippines is its emphasis on factual recall, recall or memorization which considered lower order thinking skills. Ayan, itong lower order thinking skills which is remembering and understanding. Okay? At para kontrahin ito, dapat tiyakin nating mga guro that we incorporate the upper three categories. Okay, in Bloom's taxonomy, which is analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Okay, we have to incorporate those three upper categories in creating objectives and activities in our instruction in order for us to produce critical and creative learners. Let's proceed to the third one, which is classroom environment. Students learn more when there is a positive classroom environment. Tatandaan nyo yan. Okay? The reason why teachers should also take this into account in instructional planning is because teachers should always or should have to ensure that they have a welcoming and stimulating classroom. A welcoming and stimulating classroom. Ito yung isang classroom environment na kung saan ang mga mag-aaral ay nararamdaman nila na sila ay iginagalang at kinikilala and at the same time, they are excited to learn new things. And teachers must also foster a healthy social environment where students interact with each other and no child is being excluded. So, yung pantay-pantay ang turing natin sa kanila at malaya silang makipagsalamuha sa kanilang mga kaklase. And by that, they will feel the belongingness anumang lahi at kultura ang pinanggalingan nila. Dapat siguraduhin natin na walang batang maiiwan. Paano natin yun gagawin? This could be done by forming first collaborative groups. Dito sa collaborative groupings, um, hindi lang dito din develop ang higher order thinking skills ng mga bata, but it also help to boost their confidence and self-esteem. Next, we have devising a seating or seating arrangements. Ayan. One of the importance of having a seating arrangement is that it improves classroom management. We have a level of control over our students. Yun bang bago pa magkaroon ng problema, e eh naaagapan na natin. For example, wag mong pagtatabihin ang upuan ng mag-best friend na parehong maiingay sa klase. Or yung mga bata na uh, malabo ang mga mata or the one who is visually impaired, e eh dapat nating paupuin sila sa unahan ng klase para hindi sila mahirapan. And also, sitting arrangement has an impact to students' behavior. Simple actions like um, separating your students who don't like each other. And yung wag mong pagtatabihin yung grupo ng may ingay at magugulo sa klase. Because it helps to minimize classroom disruptions and control noise levels. Ito, pangatlo, the body system. Itong body system, it is also known as mentoring. Kumbaga, it, all, it uses older students to tutor the younger counterparts. Or pwede din, yung mga fast learner na students, eh, um, i-partner natin sila sa mga um, slow learner na students. Um, may positive impact po ito on both the students. Pareho silang may matututunan sa isa't isa. A positive environment. Emotional environment should also be promoted by instilling respect toward each another. Dapat matutunan ng mga mag-aaral on how to be sensitive to the needs of their classmates. And of course, tayong mga guro, we should also model such behavior to the students para yun din syempre ang gayahin nila. Okay po? A positive classroom environment can be easily achieved through the establishment of classroom rules and routines at the start of the school year. So, these classroom rules and routines also add structure and organization to the instruction. Rules may be general such as always do your best, 
Be kind or submit your requirements on time. Raise your hand if you want to say something. Or yung tinatawag na routines, it is efficient means of doing things in the classroom that will avoid wasting time or wasted time and behavior problems. Okay? In establishing classroom rules and routines, Price and Nils Nelson in 2014 suggested the following guidelines. First, develop and evaluate them with the students. Here, keep rules few in number so everyone can remember them. Post them para syempre nakikita nila at natatandaan nila kung ano yung mga rules na um, binigay mo sa kanila or in-establish ninyo sa loob ng classroom. Um, refer to them often. Support students in following them. Teach the students what each rule means. Siyempre, hindi naman basta-basta gagawa na lang kayo ng rule wala, na wala naman na ibig sabihin. Dapat alam nila kung ano ibig sabihin ng rule na yan para, siyempre, alam, alam din nila sa sarili nila kung paano yun i-accomplish or gagawin. Acknowledge students for following them and enforce them consistently. So, hindi lang matatapos sa salita yung pagbibigay natin ng rules. We have also be firmed in enforcing them consistently para yung trust ng mga bata is hindi din mawala. Baka kasi kapag hindi natin na-enforce yun consistently, sabihin ng mga bata ay hanggang salita lang naman yun si madam or si sir, hindi naman talaga gagawin or hindi naman i-enforce yung rules na ibinigay sa amin. So, you have to enforce them consistently. Okay, another thing to consider in planning instruction are the materials. Materials are any item, tool, or piece of equipment used to support the lesson before, during, or after instruction. So, this may come in the form of first, visual aids. Okay, in social studies, we can use or we can include in our visual aids the maps and also photos and one of the things that you can get the attention of your students is the effective use of our visual materials second we have media equipment in media in media equipment we can use lcd projector or laptop we, ha we also have realia in social studies, we can use artifacts or coins, depende sa kung ano ang topic na meron tayo as, we can use those as realias. So, in realia, it is considered as one of the effective pedagogical tools in teaching, kung saan ginagamit ang totoong items na matatagpuan sa pang-araw-araw na buhay bilang tulong sa ating pagtuturo. Ang paggamit class ng realia ay nakakatulong upang hindi makalimutan o tumatak sa isip ng mga bata ang mga aralin. Dahil lumilikha ito ng link sa pagitan ng mga bagay at salita na kumakatawan sa kanila. Next stop, we have manipulatives. It can be puzzles or globe. These are physical objects that are used as teaching tools to engage students in hands-on learning. And we have also tools as um, compass or ruler. And last, we have print sources. So print sources, we can use song lyrics or other documents. And it is also recommended for teachers that in selecting instructional materials, we should use or gumamit tayo ng mga materials na kung saan is appealing siya sa different senses ng mga bata. As much as possible, the senses of hearing, sight, and touch should be tapped since this contribute the most to learning. So, stimulating the different senses create meaningful learning experiences for the students which can lead to a possible long-term retention of information. Okay? Alright? Kung mapapansin ninyo class, ang generation ng students natin ngayon are considered as digital natives. So, infusing technology in instruction can also aid their learning. Makakatulong yun sa pagkatuto ng mga bata when teachers are incorporating technology during instruction. And also, research proves the use of technology in the classroom is beneficial in increasing student motivation and achievement. 
Okay? The following are practical considerations in the use of instructional materials. First, materials should be ready to use and located nearby before beginning the instruction. So, bago pa dapat uh, magturo, um, ready na lahat ng instructional materials na um, gagamitin mo for the instructions. And dapat well prepared sa teacher for student learning and achievement for the teaching can be organized and impressive. And kapag well prepared and teacher, it makes sure that the lessons are meaningful. Next, every student should have an equal chance to see and or access the materials. Why? Um, lahat naman talaga, lahat ng estudyante ay may equal chance to see or access the materials because every student has the right to learn. Magkakaiba man ang level of intelligence ng mga estudyante natin or yung progress nila, they all have the equal chance to access the materials that we are providing them. Okay, number three, teachers should preview the materials. Why? In order to explain difficult terms to students, anticipate misconceptions, answer queries, and make meaningful connections. And fourth, uh, materials should be age-appropriate, culturally responsive, and gender-sensitive. So, yung instructional materials na gagamitin ng teachers, it should be culturally responsive or relevant. Ano ba ang exactong ibig sabihin nito? Um, cultural relevance class means that your choice of materials reflect the background, knowledge, and experiences of the diverse children in your classroom. This will provide a strong foundation of learning for them. And also, instructional materials, sabi dito, should be age-appropriate. Why? This means that the materials should match the stage of the development of the learners. Okay, the next thing that should be considered in instructional planning is the students, of course. The student is the heart of the learning process. Sila yung pinaka-sentro at pinaka-importanting parte ng learning process. And, and since sila yung heart ng learning process, they should be given utmost consideration in instructional planning. Sila naman talaga yung dahilan kung bakit ang teacher ay um, gumagawa ng instructions ng maayos para matuto sila. And <clears throat> in order to effectively facilitate learning, the teachers should take into account the following planning process. First, we have the student readiness. Gaano ba kahanda yung estudyante na um, matutunan yung lessons na binibigay mo sa kanila o yung instruction na ginawa mo. This differs, student readiness refers to the ability level of a student in relation to a given topic or skill. Okay? This can be caused by differences in their learning rate and prior experiences. I am learning rate. So, since na ang bawat estudyante natin sa loob ng classroom ay iba-iba, so iba-iba rin yung pace ng learning nila. Um, for example, um, some of the students in grade 1 ay alam na nila kung paano gumawa ng timeline. Samantalang yung iba ay nahihirapan pa rin kung paano unawain or intindihin yung tinatawag na chronology. Therefore, it is important for teachers to acknowledge that students do not learn at the same pace. Okay? And also, the teachers should utilize scaffolding for those who struggle in the lessons. Dito class sa tinatawag na scaffolding, ito, ito yung um, kung paano sinusuportahan ng teacher ang, ang, ang pag-unlad ng estudyante at pag-aaral ng mga ito sa pamamagitan ng pagtulong ng tama, sa tamang oras at sa tamang pamamaraan. Okay, another one, we have the student's interest. This is a powerful motivator to engage students in the learning process. Okay, ayan. 
So, capturing students' interest is important for them to be academically engaged and perform well in the subject. Tingnan nyo yung picture, ayan, yung ginagawa ng mga estudyante. Um, some students may be interested in superheroes while others may be fascinated in cartoon characters. So, napakahalaga na makapture yung interest nila in order for them to be, to be engaged and perform well in the subject. So, paano ba ito mangyayari? This can be done by, by identifying their interest and incorporating this in the lesson or by providing engaging activities. This engaging activities, this will help to focus their attention on challenging or boring subjects. Okay? Okay, we have number three, intelligence preference or learning style. So, this refers to the different cognitive inclinations that a person has for learning. So, tayo class, iba-iba yung katalinuhan na meron tayo, especially our students. Iba-iba, we have diverse um, students inside the classroom. Iba-iba yung interest ng mga yan. At iba, since na iba-iba yung katalinuhan na meron sila, iba-iba rin yung effective way ng kanil lang learnings. Uh, for example, um, may ibang estudyante na nagiging effective ang pag-aaral kapag yung music ay ini-incorporate sa lesson. Meron ding iba na mas natututo through um, uh, through dancing. Meron ibang natututo through arts and through diagrams and charts. So, ibig sabihin, iba-iba. And maraming theories of intelligences na meron tayo. Pero yung pinaka-famous is yung kay Howard Gardner na multiple intelligences. Ayan. Yan yung multiple intelligences na meron ang bawat isa. For example, meron na estudyante na body smart which is kinesthetic and interpersonal, people smart, word smart, logic smart or mathematical, nature smart, self-smart or the intrapersonal and the picture smart, the visual and the music smart. Meron pang isa, yung existential, existentialist. So, in planning instruction, teachers should vary their approaches and strategies to be able to tap the different intelligence preferences of the students. So, napakahalaga nitong um, nitong paggawa ng teachers ng iba't ibang approaches and strategies para makater yung learnings ng mga bata and para ma-acknowledge yung iba't ibang intelligences na meron sila and kapag um kapag yung teacher is nagbigay siya ng iba't ibang strategies or approaches in-incorporate niya sa kanyang lesson, mas nagiging effective and nagkakaroon ng engagement yung learnings ng mga bata sa loob ng classroom. So, one effective way of facilitating learning in a diverse classroom is through the use of what we call differentiation. Differentiation is a deliberate pedagogical strategy by which teachers create conditions in which curriculum is made accessible to individual students in ways which are appropriate to their needs and which allow them to their fullest potential. So, paano ba mangyayari ito? This is done by grouping students based on their readiness, interest, or intelligence preference. So, since nga na iba-iba yung kakayahan, yung interest ng bata, and kung paano sila matuto, we can use this differentiation. Then, each group so, nagrupo na sila based on their readiness, interest, or intelligence preferences. So, each group is then given a different material. So, bibigyan sila ng iba't ibang material, ng iba't ibang gawain, or outcome based, outcome based on their characteristics. Okay, for example, Teaching the contribution of the 1896 Philippine Revolution to national building. So, those students who are musically, musically inclined, they were tasked to compose a jingle. To those students who are linguistically intelligent, they can write a poem. And also, 
to those students who are artistically gifted they can um they may draw a poster so ayan grinupo sila depende sa kung ano yung intelligence preference nila or depende sa kung ano yung interest na meron sila and by that um they will become more engaged in the learning process okay mas um mas gaganahan silang mag-aral kasi um, aligned sa kakayahan nila and aligned sa interest nila yung binigay na task ng teacher. And yung um, approach ng teacher is aligned sa kakayahan ng mga estudyante. Finally, the teacher is the last thing that should be considered in planning instruction. And the it is important for teachers to take into account their own knowledge for instruction to become more effective. And a teacher's knowledge is comprised of three components. These are the content knowledge, the pedagogical knowledge, and the technological knowledge. When we say the content knowledge, it is the what of teaching it refers to the teacher's knowledge about the subject matter that will be taught okay and this includes knowledge of concepts theories ideas frameworks established practices and approaches so in social studies um, examples of this are knowledge of the concepts and frameworks in the social sciences such as anthropology, economics, sociology, geography, and historical thinking. So, itong knowledge na to, it is really critical since low content knowledge may contribute to the teaching of the wrong information and the development of misconceptions about the students. So, ang teachers dapat knowledgeable siya sa subject na tinuturo niya to avoid misconceptions among students na tama ang itinuturo niya at tama yung information na nakukuha ng mga estudyante. Next, we have the pedagogical knowledge. So, hindi lang sapat na dapat knowledgeable or oo, madaming alam yung um, teacher sa kanyang subject matter, dapat marunong din siya kung paano ito i-execute. And the pedagogical knowledge is the how of teaching. And it refers to the teacher's knowledge about the process of teaching and learning. This includes the principles of learning, classroom management, instructional approaches and strategies, and assessment practices. So, napaka-importante na ang teacher ay ma-develop itong tinatawag na pedagogical knowledge dahil ito ang uh, magbibigay ng napakagandang contribution to effective teaching and learning. Next, we have technological knowledge. Ito naman is kung paano i-incorporate or gamitin ng teacher yung knowledge niya sa technology in order to um, come up with an effective instruction at kung paano matuto at maging engaging ang kanyang lessons para matuto yung mga estudyante. Technological knowledge is the teacher's knowledge about the process of and ability to use technological tools and associated resources. Of course, this includes um, accessing information in the internet and awareness on processing information on the internet and also being able to adopt to new technologies. So given the um, given that the learners today are considered as digital natives, napaka importante sa mga teachers na magkaroon ng considerable degree of technological knowledge. Sa panahon ngayon, napaka importante na yung teacher talaga ay may kaalaman when it turns to technology. Kasi um, yung mga bata ngayon, yun nga, um, um, they were digital natives kaya mas um, makakatulong sa pagkatuto nila kung i-incorporate natin yung technology sa ating instructions at sa ating lessons, okay? Okay, we have here the technological pedagogical content knowledge or 
the TPAC. So, there are three knowledge that can be formed when the three knowledge of the teachers um, intersects. So, the first we have, the first knowledge that can be formed is the TCK or the technological content knowledge. So, dito siya. Ayan. Diyan siya. The TCK, it is the ability of the teacher to select the appropriate technolo technology in a particular topic that students better understand the content of the topic with the help of technology. Syempre. And the concept of the lesson becomes more concrete. This will help the teacher to have good teaching and to keep the students become interested. Okay, next we have the PCK or the Pedagogical Content Knowledge. Ayan, dito naman siya. Dito naman siya na form. Nung nag-intersect yung ano, tatlong knowledge ng teacher. So, dito sa PCK, ito naman yung ability ng teacher na pumili ng appropriate strategy na ituturo sa subject effectively. So, the teacher here considers the most appropriate task that will develop the skill of the students demanded by the subject matter. Okay? And next, we have this TPK or the Technological Pedagogical Knowledge. Okay? Dito naman siya. Ayan. May technology na naman tong kasama dito sa TPK. This is the teacher's ability to select the appropriate teaching strategy that technology uses. Kasama yung technology in its implementation. For example, yung estudyante, they will perform activity and with the help of the equipment or the technology, the result will be outstanding. And, at the center of this three knowledge will be called as the TPAC or the Technological Pedagogical Knowledge. Ayan, nandyan siya sa gitna. Ayan, nandyan siya. Dyan po yung TPAC. Okay? So, dito, makikita natin na napaka-importante na pumili ng pinaka-appropriate um, strategy for teaching a subject matter. So, students are even more excited when the teacher also considers the use of technology in creating out students' tasks. So, when this TPAC, itong TPAC, ayan, when this TPAC framework is followed, kapag nasunod ito, teaching will definitely be effective and interesting. And class, teachers with, with a high level of TPAC knows how and when technology can be used to assist instruction and when technology should not be used because it impedes learning. Ayan, napaka-importante ng TPAC sa ating mga guro. So, ngayon, sa social studies, um, the, um, they demonstrate TPAC through the use of Google Maps to teach location and direction or the employment of web games. Ayan, ginagamit na yung technology dito in presenting important events in Philippine history. Okay, and taking into account the teacher's knowledge is important not only in assessing one state of current knowledge and skills but also in ensuring the effective delivery of instruction to students. Alright, this ends our discussion in Lesson 6 and thank you very much class. I hope you learned something new today and sana makatulong ito sa pagsagot ng inyong task doon sa module na ibinigay ko. Okay, maraming salamat ulit. Um, keep safe everyone and God bless you!